Welcome back to Get Even. We've arrived at, I think, the top floor of Future Defense Group. Notice, personal use of computers is strictly prohibited. Any infraction of this rule will be considered a very serious offense that will result in termination of employment, just like it was with Gregory Mason's case. Oh, that must be the Greg that Rose got fired. Again, I'm getting a little bit muddled on who Robert versus Howard worked for. I thought Ramsey worked for uh, ADS, which, which is FDG's rival. But no, it looks like Ramsey works for FDG. Who does Howard work for? I think they work with ADS. 2015 British Inventor Award for Robert Ramsey and his team uh, at Future Defense Group. Honorable mention, Rose Atkins, for the augmented reality helmet system. Is that me? Oh shit, did Black just throw her out of a top floor? I remember now. I killed her. You surprised me, Mr. Black. I suspected you were involved, but I didn't imagine that you would confess your guilt quite so readily. Involved? Involved how? Did you really think I wouldn't notice a memory being so heavily distorted? What are you hiding from me, Black? What kind of games are you playing? I'm just exploring these memories like you asked. Nothing more. If only that were true, everything would be so much less complicated. I don't know what you're talking about. You've got to believe me. Ah, but I don't, Mr. Black. Not anymore. But Rose did mention a name. Howard. I'm assuming Roger Howard, the man you stole the corner gun from. Did you meet with him? I... Don't worry, Mr. Black. The Pandora will find the truth. I'm telling you, that's what happened. I promise. So... Rose Atkins is dead. Why is that, Mr. Black? You just saw. Because I pushed her. Same question. And why was that, Mr. Black? It's obvious. You were watching. I was trying to save Grace. Rose was trying to stop me. So I killed her. You saw. I saw nothing of the kind, Mr. Black. I only saw distortion, fragmentation, allusions to a truth that I believe neither of us witnessed. If there was any distortion, it's from this piece of shit tin can I'm wearing. I'm telling you, I was trying to save Grace. Words, Mr. Black. You have been less than cooperative throughout this process. There is one question you haven't considered. How did you know that Grace had been taken when I hadn't even received the ransom demand? It doesn't matter. I tried to stop it. By killing Rose Atkins, Mr. Black. I'm afraid that that does matter. It matters a great deal. She said the name Howard. That's who I stole the corner gun from. It was revenge. Must have been. She said it was all his idea. Which confirms my suspicions as to motive. Understand, Mr. Black. The fact that Howard is mixed up in this at all is the only reason you are alive. Now, for the final time, proceed. Let's see, what's... Where's the latest one? Uh, there we go, Cole Black found her. I think I've killed her. But she did say who's behind all this. It's Howard. He did this. The streams I had, they were Ramsey's memories. 
He kidnapped me. There is no treatment. I don't care anymore. I have to get to the bottom of this. Remember, you can use evidence room to revisit memories and correct some of your mistakes. Hmm. Interesting. So, well, for one, uh, Red just said that for the final time, proceed, and then given that little tip, I'm guessing now is my only chance to go back to old memories. However, it also said not just find new evidence, but also correct mistakes. Does that mean I can basically unkill people? If I go into a memory and don't kill anyone, do I unkill them? That seems to be the implication, but I can't think of anywhere I could do that. I know when I went into, I think it was ADS, in that building and went up the elevator, I know I had to shoot a couple people on my way out, but I didn't see any way around that. So, yeah. Let's take a look and see how we're doing on percentages, though. Remember, I want everything, I'd say, above 80%. Also, the final board. Seeking more answers, Mr. Black. Still not lit up. Remember, you can relive a memory by using the photo underneath each evidence board to collect anything you may have missed. So this one is not good enough. 76%. It's not far off of 80, though. Oh, that one's terrible. Whoa. Whoa. Huh. So I keep finding those doors in each level. Maybe there's one in each level. And so by doing that, it gives me the code to it. Hmm. It's the cemetery, though. Where's the code for the cemetery? I remember it. Definitely did encounter it. How can it possibly reveal anything, though, that would give me more information that Red doesn't want me to see? Because Red is giving it to me as a reward. If they're giving it to me, then surely they know it's not going to be some revelatory thing, right? That's going to hurt them. Hmm. 96%. So close. Uh, it makes me want to 100% everything, but that would be incredibly tedious. Like, seriously, it would be so tedious. I'm not going to do that. This one we must get more on once we go back to the asylum, given that we're at 51%. Um... Yeah. Okay. Even this is going to take a while. I'm going to have to try to, I guess, run through the cemetery. Because that was a pretty big section. I think I've got to kind of get to the building. Let's do it. 1376. So what's in here then? Two bars of evidence. Scan a weapon to unlock it. Is that what's in each one? Just goodies? Another toy for you, Mr. Black. Please use responsibly. Sniper rifle, now available in the arsenal. Well, that makes me certain that I don't want to find any more of these. Why bother? I don't shoot anybody, if I can help it. I'm never going to use that. What about this, though? It's a lot of money. It's a difficult job. Maybe we can... Negotiate some kind of deal. No deal. That's the offer. Take it or leave it. And what do I get in return? You get the best. You get this corner gun. No questions asked. And if it all goes south, you get to deny you had anything to do with it. I, I can't afford this much. I understand. No, wait. Yeah? I need utter discretion. Like I said, 
No questions asked. And no questions answered. Of course. You don't know me. We never met. I never even heard of you. <sighs> okay. You sure? I can't be fucking about with people who aren't sure. I'm sure. It's half up front, half when the job's done. I start working the moment the money's in my account. I'll be in touch to arrange payment. I'll wait to hear. Okay, so that was initial... The initial bargaining with Ramsey to steal the corner gun. From ADS. Okay, I'm gonna try to quickly... Well, relatively quickly sum up each one of these boards as best I can. I haven't looked in depth at each board going over every single note, but I'll just do it in broad strokes. Keeping in mind that we have one board that is completely undone, and also I'm going to ignore this board because it's only 51% done, and I think we will be coming back to that shortly. Let's start with job for Robert Ramsey. Okay, so Roger Howard was the lead person of the ADS group, which used to be on top of the European global like arms manufacturing uh, economy. They were the top, or at least up there. However, Robert Ramsey worked for rival group FDG. Yeah. Yeah, Roger Howard worked for ADS. Ramsey worked for FDG. FDG hatched this plan to steal the corner gun with Cole Black's help from ADS. ADS were the ones originally making the corner gun and possibly even the helmet and the VR and all that stuff as well, but definitely the corner gun at least. Robert Ramsey wanted that, so stole it from them and started to develop it themselves, and that put them on top of the kind of arms manufacturer market. That's what this is mostly about. Rose and Jasper. Okay, so this is all about Rose and Jasper and their plan. Uh, their plan with Ramsey. So I don't think Ramsey was actually aware that Rose was involved in this plan. Uh, but this was a plan to, I guess, somehow take power from Ramsey. Rose wanted it for herself. I guess she was sick of working for FDG and not getting the credit she was due. So she wanted money or power or something or maybe the corner gun design itself. And it involved Jasper and planning out a kidnapping of Grace mapped out the schedules for Lenore and Grace and Robert Ramsey and all that stuff and figured out the best way to kidnap Grace, use her as leverage to get stuff from Ramsey. Meeting with Rose. So this board is mostly about how Rose uh, was able to join as an assistant, the FDG group, and then how she kind of rose up through the ranks and her correspondence with her old friend Clara, Hannah, something. No, Hannah was Grace's friend. Yeah, uh, Clara. Clara Bombera. Bunch of emails with Clara talking about that. Uh, notice talking about how she got Gregory fired. So yeah, pretty much all about Rose. And Rose and Ramsey together. And from the cemetery, at the very beginning, Rose was having a conversation with me, Cole Black. And we learned, it's, it sounded like Cole did not want Grace to get hurt and was kind of bailing out and was not happy with what was happening. And then that made Rose sever ties with him and last thing she said was like security, uh, take him out, basically kill him, make it painless, something like that. So that went south. Uh, Jasper's dying minutes. This one's a bit confusing. So yeah, Jasper... Uh, Jasper was found dead in a warehouse next to where the hostage situation happened. I think a couple of days before, if I remember right. So that's Jasper and his military buddies, who I think he... Once he got out of the army, I think him and his buddies did mercenary contracts and, you know, operations together. And then just a bunch of things about uh, Jasper Prado. You know, were they a victim or a culprit? They were known to take drugs, blah, blah, blah. I think that's about... All we know about that. Oh yeah, and this person, Jared Porter, was an informant to the police. An informant on, I think, the probably the um, the mercenary people. And this, the victim, is once again about Jasper. So Jasper, along with a bunch of mercenary people, were found dead in that warehouse next to where the bombing happened just a little bit before. 
It's about the two detectives' investigation into that, Hector Chadwick and Detective Art Fair. So they managed to identify the body through, I guess, autopsies and stuff. Lots of case notes. Nothing too interesting. Um, most interesting thing, I think, is that at some point, Detective Bart Fair went missing and Chadwick started searching for him. Don't know what happened with that. There's some stuff about reopening a case because of something, but then it was denied. I'm not exactly sure what that's about. I think that's about all the interesting stuff there. Uh, the kidnapping... Yeah, not much to go over there, really. I mean, it was Grace. We already know that. Just lots of articles about there being an explosion. Mm-hmm. Sedatives. Grace was sedated. Someone was shooting... Uh, one of the mercenaries was shooting this picture of... That's Ramsey, right? That is Ramsey, isn't it? The man from the Lithurst Asylum. So all this asylum stuff, I gotta be honest, I don't get this asylum stuff. There's a bunch of stuff about the Puppet Master. I don't know who that is, what that is. I, I, I'm sure it's going to matter at the end, but it just feels like some silly, weird, kind of strange horror aspect to this game that doesn't seem to fit. To me, it just feels very strange. I don't know what that's about. We've seen some patient numbers. We know someone has a prosthetic arm. There's been some amputations there of people. A lot of the people at the asylum were in the war. I think the asylum was repurposed to test the headset out. So they used like an abandoned old asylum that had terrible, brutal uh, tactics that they used to try to quote unquote cure people. Back in the day, it was abandoned. And then I think FDG and Ramsey probably took over the asylum and used it to test their headset. Because there's lots of super high technology, like modern technology, that was retrofitted onto that old, weird asylum. Uh, something about toy therapy, which seems connected probably with this toy that we keep seeing. I'm thinking it's possible I'm one of the patients or something, I don't know. That's me, Cold Black. And the very final one, the man from the Lithurst Asylum. Again, I'm not going to go over that one because it's only 51% done, and I think we're about to collect more evidence for that. Seems pretty similar to... Oh, wait, they're actually... Wait, their name is the same. The man from the Lithurst Asylum. Uh, this one's building B, and this one's building C. Same date. 22nd. 2015. Huh. Alright, let's jump into there. I guess we're going into building C. So I suspect the person who's interrogating me may be Lenore. Ramsey's wife. Possibly. Music's intense. Evidence nearby. Getting one bar. Wait, it's starting to go down? Someone's having fun. Well, whatever, wherever the evidence is, it's not in the stairwell. Long time no see. Ah, to see. There's the gift. Can you see? No. I don't think you do. You see yourself as above everyone in here. Just another inmate, stuck in the past, stuck in here, stuck in a rut. But then... You always were. It's why we're here. It's why we're all fucking here. That was a lot of different voices that just came from one person. What is with all this weird amputation stuff? Amputation, now everything looks better. The fuck? Thanks for the ammo.
Uh, which way should I go? Check out this way first. I think it's a dead end. Must be where they hold the art therapy classes. Therapy in this place. Take out the demons. Place them on the page. Paint is red. Should be black. The puppet master will not give these. Seeing this, it must be the tech playing up again. Yeah, not so sure about that. Patient 219 is complaining about frequent headaches and occasional blackouts, although as far as I know he didn't suffer any head injuries in the last year or two. What causes the headaches then? Are they psychosomatic? What about his blackouts? Are they linked to his amnesia or depression in some way? 219 is something of a puzzle for me. He says he feels constant guilt, keeps blaming himself for past events, but he is unable or unwilling to give me or Dr. Benway any specifics. Yeah, so, like, I'm 95% certain that I'm patient 219. Yeah, constant guilt. Remember all the guilt stuff we've seen about the bombing? About Grace? And I'm pretty sure that toy I keep seeing all around here was also linked to patient 219. Definitely looks like something you can read, but I can't. Oh god, what now? Little black cat. Or should I say, white rabbit? Ah, <laughs> you're so very late. But welcome to the party! The entertainment is about to begin. Entertainment? Yes! Yes! The puppet show for the puppet master! Can't you see? Everyone's playing their part! <laughs> Play you can't leave! You must drink! No master is above his subjects! Hmm. 
and they wanted me to drink, right? So they wanted me to poison myself. certain details if they make a conscious effort to reject the technology. Perceived resistance, order of events, conversations, even environments may all be distorted or even hidden. It's problematic, but the savant should be able to debug any inconsistencies in the review phase. exactly what I've created here. It seems as though the human brain cannot occupy any simulated environment alone. In much the same way we're unable to sleep without dreaming, it seems the brain populates these areas somehow, typically, with other humans. The nature of the populace seems to be directly related to the user's state of mind regarding the environment itself. Something to monitor. New test subject, John K. A teacher, oh, that's the person that I just killed. A teacher who allegedly tried to seduce one of his teenage students would be an ideal test subject for the Pandora, especially if it helps him clear his name. We'll make the approach when I'm ready. Huh. Okay. Follow the line? Doesn't look like it, but footsteps lead there. I also lead right here. ready to begin. He seems stable enough, though hope expresses doubts over my own ability to oversee the review. No matter. I must proceed. I must get the truth. I'm plugging him in.
Wait, this is you, you fucking bastard. Let me out of here now. This has gone on long enough. Calm down, Mr. Black. That glass is bulletproof, shatterproof and soundproof. Your words cannot reach me and your bullets cannot harm me. Now, move on. We are so very close. All roads end here, Mr. Black. Time for answers. You know the protocol by now. Let us see exactly what secrets you are hiding. How many times do I have to tell you? I'm not hiding anything. We have a name. Howard. He's the enemy. If only it were that simple, Mr. Black. It's really cool the way they're like melting into the floor. When ADS downsized, Roger Howard had to sell most of his assets, including the two biggest warehouses and ADS headquarters, which were acquired by his rivals from FDG. But he never sold a small warehouse on Small Lane and Solahole. Why is that building so important to him? Could it be his hideout? GPS coordinates. Coal Black mobile phone tracking data. That one down there is marked. Around 5.55 p.m. From eerie jest to secure, subject to be there. Black, I've got a proposition that I think you need to hear. We should talk. How about tomorrow? Coordinates are... R. Howard. 5221. 5221.11.8. 5221.11.8. 5221.11.8. Okay, so that's the one that's been marked. The meeting with Howard. From something to nothing. Roger D. Howard off the business map. Two years ago. Roger D. Howard's hugely successful arms manufacturing corporation, ADS, was one of the most profitable stocks. Uh, last year, however, saw one of the most significant share value crashes in recent history for ADS when rival company FDG released the revolutionary hinge-barreled corner gun. A considerable downsize has resulted in a loss of several significant assets for ADS, including the controversial Glock Tower. The latest... The latest... The, the latest and addition... What? The latest addition to Birmingham Skyline. We tried to contact Howard for a statement, but failed to track him down. It seems even former colleagues have no idea of his whereabouts. An anonymous source close to Howard said that he's worried about what Howard is capable of in the wake of ADS's collapse. He's not a man who will forgive, and he's not a man who will forget, said our source. When I pressed him, our source refused to comment further, but it's possible that the ADS rivalry with FDG goes deeper than any of us imagine. I don't know what I expected to find. Maybe I'm guilty of exactly the same thing I accused Black of, making assumptions. I thought he had to be working for Howard, but now I don't know what to think. The memory clearly isn't corrupted, but something just doesn't add up. lost everything when you stole the corner gun from me. It would make sense he'd want revenge. The only question is why would you have any memory of meeting him? The only memory I have of Roger Howard is the night I stole the corner gun. We'll see, Mr. Black. We'll see. I feel like this is all leading towards some big twist. Like, you've been Grace all along. You are the bomb. Or something. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. But anyway, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So I hope you've enjoyed so far. And I'll be back soon.